working. Alright, so um, well, good morning everyone. Um, thanks for the invitation. Uh, it's a tricky invitation because I'm supposed to give you um, an introductory course to cosine geometry. So I'm going to try to do that. So there are many people in the audience that know a lot about cosine geometry and this will be pretty boring for them. So pick up your papers and do some work. Uh, if you get too bored, so tomorrow we'll have the soccer game. You can, you can always get rid of me by breaking my leg. <laughs> <laughs> or you can go to the botanical garden. Okay, so the idea of this course will be a introductory course, but we will focus mostly on global issues in Boston geometry. Um, there will be a bunch of exercises. And there will be a bunch of things that will be left for the exercise sessions. So I have the help of Yonat and Danielle. Maybe Yonat should, so can you raise your hand? That's Yonat. And uh, Danielle, where is he? Right there. The one with that orange t-shirt. So they will help out. You can talk to any of us and ask questions whenever you want. Um, so today's lecture will be a bit about the origins of post geometry, um, at least as I see it. Um, I don't explain any kind of historical accuracy. So, um, so let's start with the definition of a post bracket. So this will be an operation on the smooth functions on the manifold. And this has to be bilinear, physiometric, and satisfy the Jacobi identity. So it's a little bracket. And in some sense it has to be local. And the way to formalize this is to say that it satisfies a Leibniz type of identity. So if I pick two functions and I take a bracket between one of them and the product of two, then this will satisfy this derivation problem. Okay? So that's a possible bracket. And of course, if you have a map between two manifolds equipped with Poisson brackets, it should be clear what is a Poisson map. So a Poisson map is a map. So when I say map, I always mean a smooth map between two Poisson manifolds, so two manifolds equipped with Poisson brackets. And we have to map the brackets to each other. So that's what it is. All right. So so the name Poisson is after a French mathematician called Denis Simon Denis Poisson. He was a French mathematician at the end of the. 18, beginning of the 19th century, and then you probably have heard his name in different contexts. So Poisson distribution in statistics of probability is the same Poisson. Um, recently, I had a postdoc who gave me a, a copy of the. So he wrote a two volume book on the mechanics, and I tried to look for Poisson brackets in there, and I did not find them. <laughs> so I don't know, where, I don't know where, where exactly it appears in the work of Poisson. But supposedly is to produce uh, integrals out of non-integrals, and we'll, go, we'll get to that. Uh, but you can look in Wikipedia for and get much more information that I can possibly tell you. Um, but why should we care about Poisson brackets? So why should we study them? So 
Now, some of you will know symplectic geometry, so I assume that so the prerequisites for this course is a bit of differential geometry and a bit of symplectic geometry. So in symplectic geometry, you have seen a Poisson bracket. So let's recall that. So let's start with our first example. So we start keep the notations I have in my notes. Oh, by the way, I should have said that uh, there are some notes that have some mistakes, but they will be keeping updated and some mistakes will be eliminated, some will stay there forever. Uh, and you can get them, I think there are uh, uh, copies available, but um, if you want more recent versions, One page, <coughs> and you will find uh, the lectures for, for them. Eventually, there will be some version in LaTeX. Right now, it's complete. All right. So, as I said, the first example is symplectic. Manifold, so let's start with a symplectic manifold. So omega is close to form, which is non degenerate. Okay, and if I have a function on my but with many faults, I can define the vector fields. So that's my notation for the space of vector fields. By asking that this vector field contracted with the symplectic form gives me the differential of H. And the non-generacy will guarantee that this gives me a well-defined vector field. So there are various signs and various conventions in this thing. So that's my convention. And uh, once I have this vector field, then I define a Poisson bracket by, and again here there is a convention, so, and my convention I put the minus sign. Okay. So the very first exercise that. I give you in my lectures is to check the text in the Poisson bracket. And in the notes, you will have various hints to help you in this exercise. So check this in the Poisson bracket. Okay, so the non trivial thing to be checked is the Jacobi identity. That's not very hard. Okay, by the way, some more things about sign conventions. So one of the very first examples of the symplectic form is the canonical symplectic form of the cotangent problem. And my convention, so gives us minus the differential of okay? So it's uniquely characterized by that. And you can try to check in local coordinates with this gives you. All right. Okay. Now, okay, so this is a 
very standard thing. Now let's see something. So say you know symplectic geometry and say, okay, I know symplectic geometry. Why should I care about Boston brackets? Okay, maybe they are all symplectic, right? Well, if you know symplectic geometry, you know that that's not true. So let's take an action of some Lie group. So, and since I'm going to form quotients, I'm going to assume for simplicity the action is proper and free. And let's assume that this action is by simplect by simplectomorphism. So acting such that each translation by an element is a symplectomorph. So preserve the symplectic form. <coughs> okay, so by the way, we could have checked here that for these Poisson brackets, a diffeomorphism is Poisson if and only if it preserves the symplectic form. Right, so this is the same thing as saying that it's a Poisson d Okay, so now we have a proposition. There exists a unique Poisson structure, Poisson bracket. on the quotient S mod G, which is a manifold because I'm assuming the action is proper and free, for which the quotient map is a Poisson map. Okay, so why is this true? Well, this is simply because if you think of the functions in this quotient, so the proof it is this to the fact that functions on this quotient can be identified with functions on S, which are invariant under the action of G. Okay. okay, so if these maps are Poisson diffeomorphism, then functions which are gene variant, when you take the Poisson bracket of two of them, they will be a gene variant function. Right? So you get a bracket on gene variant functions, that is the same thing as saying you get a bracket on S mod G. Okay, okay so that's proof. Now, exercise two. Uh, well, assume the dimension of the group is greater than zero. <coughs> so the, the exercise asks you whether is this muscle bracket on S mod G coming from a symplectic form in this way? Poisson bracket comes from a symplectic form, but simply say that the Poisson bracket is non degenerate or symplectic. Okay? Okay, so that's the first exercise. And here's another exercise just to get things even more explicit. Try the following take S to be C2 minus the origin, or if you prefer R4 minus the origin. With symplectic form this symplectic form 
So this is actually the canonical symplectic form on the on R4, if you want, on the contingent model of R2, just written in a more appropriate way for this exercise. <coughs> so this is a real real symplectic form. And uh, try take the action of S1 on S So theta represents an element of S1 and take the action given by rotating in Z in one direction and rotating in W in the other direction. Okay. Now this action is proper and free. Find the Poisson structure on the quotient S by this group. So find Poisson structure on S over S1. Okay. And there is a hint in the, in the notes. So that's very first example, and you already see that even if you care only about symplectic geometry, at some point you're going to have to deal with Poisson brackets, which do not come from symplectic search. Okay, so let's go back to arbitrary symplectic, uh, arbitrary Poisson manifolds. So, Leibniz plus Jacobi identity. For a general, so here, for a general Poisson bracket, a map from functions to vector fields simply by saying that these vector fields is the vector field which applied to a function is bracketing with H. Okay? So by Leibniz, this is a derivation. So it's a vector field. And by Jacobi, this map is actually a Lie alpha map. It takes a Poisson bracket here to the, post, to the ordinary Lie bracket of vector fields. So this is and my conventions are such that this is really a real homomorphism, not an anti-homomorphism. There is no minus sign. So, So, usually you call this the Hamiltonian vector field associated with the function H, and you call the function H the Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian vector field associated with H. So the study of the dynamics of these vector fields is called Hamiltonian dynamics. Okay? And that's an important thing in, is an important branch of dynamics. Okay, so let me give you another example. This will be example two. So let's take for G any finite dimensional D alpha. that our manifold in this case is going to be the dual vector space. And this carries a canonical Poisson bracket. Canonical just means it doesn't depend on any choices, so it has a Poisson bracket. Which 
which is defined as this follows. So if I take two functions, so here f and g are functions on my manifold, which is the dual vector space. So I have to tell you what this function is, so I'm going to tell you what is the value on some psi, a point in G star. So if I take the differential of a function and at psi, that's naturally an element in the double dual of G star, which is, since its finite dimension is an element of G. So this is an element of G. So if I take two functions, I have two elements of G. So I can take the brackets. This is the Lie bracket that I have on my Lie algebra G. And I can contract this with Xi. So it's getting everything on the top of the table. Some more space here. So the recipe is So that gives you a, a Poisson bracket again. You have to can check that. And for this Poisson bracket, the Hamiltonian vector field associated with the function h is has. Trajectories, solutions of the OBE <coughs> C dot T equal to minus S <coughs> star. So well, let me write this in the next point of the process. So add star denotes the adjoint, the quadrate representation of the Lie algebra G on G star. Okay. This is an element of G. If I compute the differential of H at the point psi of T, so I can apply add star of this to this element of G star, right? And I get an element of G star. That has to be. <coughs> okay, so these are usually known as Euler equations. And you can find this in books in classical mechanics. <coughs> okay, so here is another exercise. I guess four. So this exercise asks you to show that in this example, this Poisson bracket on G star actually comes from a symplectic manifold by reduction in the sense that we have just so check and this bracket is the one in this only. So if you take T star of G, that's a symplectic manifold in its canonical symplectic form. The group G acts here. How? G acts on itself, say by left translations, you can lift the action, right? You get an action in here. That action is going to preserve the canonical symplectic form. So you can take this quotient because that action is always free and proper. Okay? Now there is going to be some size here because you can take either the left action or the right action. Okay? So it's part of the exercise to figure out what are the right signs to get the form of the table. Okay. Uh, another remark is that this bracket here has a special property, which is the bracket. If, so G star is a vector space. If you take linear functions on this vector space and you take this Poisson bracket, you get back a linear function. So this bracket preserves linear functions. 
So the remark is, if D is a vector space, a Poisson bracket is for linear, Poisson bracket on D is for linear, if the bracket of linear functions is a linear function. So if it The remark is that any linear Poisson bracket is actually of this form. So if I give you a linear Poisson bracket on a vector space, the dual vector space is going to be a Lie algebra, and the bracket that you start with it is the Poisson bracket on the dual of that Lie algebra. Check more that any post, any linear Poisson map. So given a linear Poisson map, so between P star and H star is Poisson. A linear map, sorry, is Poisson. If no link, you look at the dual map, there's a real group on the map. So what this says is that Lie algebras or Lie Lee theory is kind of a special part of Poisson jump. Very special. All right, so let's look at one more example. So this lecture is for basic examples. If you really want to learn this, you have to work on some of these exercises and look at the examples. So this example three actually maybe some people that work in Poisson geometry don't know about it. Uh, it's a special kind of quadratic Poisson graph. But not the usual ones that people in Poisson geometry are used to, and which will appear in some of the other lectures, which go by the name Poisson groups. That will not be the case here. So let's take n to be our n. And we fix a specimetric matrix so specimetric. All right. Now this in terms of Poisson bracket. I'm going to tell you only what is this Poisson bracket on the coordinate on the linear coordinates on Rn. Okay? Let me turn for you the Poisson bracket on any two on any pair of functions by using the Leibniz identity. So this is the, the Poisson structure. So here there is no sum. Okay? This is bracket of Xi xj is the element Aij times Xi times Xj. Okay? No sum. You can entertain yourself checking that it satisfies the Jacobi identity. Okay, now if so why is this bracket interesting? Let's restrict this to the positive the vectors with all, po all components positive, so I'm going to denote that by Rn plus. So. Um, so this is Xi positive. And consider the function h 
to be the following function. Check that the corresponding Hamiltonian vector field has integral curves given by the following equations. Okay, so I goes from 1 to n, and the epsilon i's here is an abbreviation for the following numbers. So this equation is what appears in biology, and it's called the log of Volterra equations. So they control the evolution of n species, the population of n species. That interact. So the epsilon i's are like, if there was no interaction between the species, they would either grow or decrease exponentially. And the AIJs are interaction factors. <coughs> so this Poisson structure actually has a long story behind it. So Volterra, Tito Volterra himself, wrote a book in the late 20s called Lectures for the Fight for Life. And he had there, he, his aim was to mechanize biology. And he actually, he did not write out these, but he wrote, so he introduced, so he had this, he, they, he found this equation, and he decided to double the number of equations and introduce some extra variables that he called quantity of life. And with the extra variables, he was able to write down the equations in Hamiltonian form, but for a symplectic structure. And we'll see some maybe that for the next exercise. Uh, I write this here. So if you take the vector of lambdas, 
this is a fixed point or an equilibrium point for these differential equations. Okay, so, so they are just some numbers. You can shoot them. They are fixed, but you can shoot them as you want. Okay, so the exercise is to check that this is a Poisson map. If we take omega the canonical symplectic form. Basically, what Volterra did, did in our language. He uses so he, he wrote in some sense the inverse of this map, which is very strange, right? Because it's not a, does not have an inverse, but it's a non-local map that he wrote. Anyway. Okay. So, by the way, so this is this map coming from the symmetry reduction, like the the one we. We saw before. So all the possible brackets so far have come from some symplectic form. So I'm not going to tell the answer. That's an exercise. But even if this does not come from a symmetry reduction, I'm not going to say that it does not come. I'm not giving you the answer. But even if it, if it does not come, then this comes in some sense from a symplectic manifold in another way, which is by a subjective submersion, which is a Poisson map. So there is a symplectic manifold here and a subjective submersion. So that's what people call a symplectic realization of your Poisson map. But it still is coming from some symplectic object. So you may ask, well, if I give you a symplectic, if I give you a Poisson bracket, does it come in this way? Does it come from a symplectic manifold? Not by a reduction, maybe that's too asking too much, but by a symplectic realization. Okay. Okay, as I mentioned in the beginning, one of the motivations to study Poisson brackets is to produce integrals. So let's look at that a little bit. So for the general vector field, why you are you interested in, in, in first integrals? Because that helps you integrate in the equations of motion. Right? So for any vector field on the manifold, the first integral is just a function is constant on the trajectory. So if I take I and I compute it along some trajectory, the dt of this is zero for all t. So that's of course the same thing as saying that as a derivation, this vector field kills I, right? And once you have that, so for integrals are useful, Because you can decrease the dimension by restricting to the level sets. If you know that the level sets stay on the on, on the if you know that the trajectory stays on the level set, then you can restrict to the level sets and you decrease the dimension by one. Right? Okay. Well, if you decrease the dimension by one. Okay, so that's for a general vector field. Now, for Hamiltonian vector fields, we can do better. We can use first integrals to decrease not by one, but by two. So let's just see how that works. Then, first 
out is the procedural. That's the same thing as saying that the I will be is zero, just from the definition of final contract. Second thing, the Hamiltonian is always a procedural, right? Because the bracket is symmetric, so it comes into itself. And third, if we have two procedurals, then the bracket of them is again a procedural. So you can use the Poisson bracket to produce new Poisson rows, and I believe this was the original way that Poisson got into Poisson. He was interested, for example, in the problem of stability of the, of the solar system. OK. OK, so suppose now that I have a Poisson group. That the vector field associated with the, this first integral, so the Hamiltonian vector field associated with the first integral i is complete. So flow exists for all time. Okay, so that means that I can define an, an, an action of R by taking its flow. Okay, so T x T x is for of the objective fields of the X. So the first thing is to note that this action preserves the level set of I. <laughs> Well, because if you want, the Hamiltonian is always the first integral, so that's always the case. OK, so then I can do the following thing. I can restrict to this, as I did for general vector fields. But now I can reduce by this action of this R. Okay? So I can reduce the dimension one more time.
So we start with okay. So in this diagram, so I'm only assuming that the action is problem and free on the neighborhood. But let's assume the neighborhood is the whole manifold M just to simplify things. So that's, I will write here the neighborhood. I'm writing M, assuming that it's problem free on the whole M. So I can go to M over R. Remember that we saw before that there is a Poisson bracket on this quotient, so this, this map is Poisson. And now here, I have the inclusion. Okay, so the claim is that there is a Poisson bracket that makes this inclusion a Poisson map, right? And also, if you start with uh, your Hamiltonian vector fields, so I have my vector fields in M, under this map, this goes to a vector field x h4, where h4 is simply uh, a function such that h is h4 equal to this projection. Okay, and also this vector field will be tangent to this semantic. And in fact, what's happening is that if I take my function h4 and I restrict to the level set i minus a I get a function here, I can take its vector field, I'm a vector field here, and this is mapped to that vector field. Could you remove the board up a bit? So the, the thing is, if I have a first integral in the case of Poisson, and the point of vector field of the Poisson manifold, then I can reduce the dimension by 2 in principle. Okay? Not by 1. And you see that all these constructions, so if you know symplectic geometry, you know this is a, a, just a very elementary case of symplectic reduction. But you see that in all these constructions, it's kind of natural to use Poisson brackets. You can do this using symplectic form. This is very natural business in the Poisson bracket. And of course, it works in general for Poisson brackets, not just symplectic. So I'm not going to give you the, the proof of this, which is elementary, but I'll give you another exercise. Now wait a second. What time do we finish? Right. Why is it not? Quarter past. Quarter past. What time is it now? Afternoon, <coughs> five two. So how much time do I have left? <laughs> Can you complete that? Almost twenty minutes. Ah. Okay, so then I can give you the first. Okay, it was off. Okay, so let's then prove this. Or at least sketch. Okay, so the first thing to observe is that if I take this vector field, Fi, this vector field is, a, is what's called a Poisson vector field. So what do I mean by that? So it means that the flow of this vector field is going to preserve the Poisson vector field. So why is that? If I take and I compute this vector field on a, on a bracket of two functions, then this is simply, by definition, this bracket. And by the copy identity, this will be given by these brackets. But this is simply same thing as saying that the vector field xi acts as a derivation of this Poisson bracket. Okay? And now this means, well, actually it's equivalent to say that if I take the flow of xi, then it 
preserves the Christian life. It's God plus one in human. So this implies that if I have arm bearing functions, are preserved. So that means that we have a Poisson bracket. observe that uh, if I take the bracket of I with any R invariant function, that's zero. So that will give us that this bracket, you can define actually a bracket in here on the last side. That's more or less the sketch of the proof. Okay, but here is a, another exercise. So the exercise asks is that suppose now that I have a second person. So show that if J is another percentile. And J commutes with I, then J induces. So in particular, J, if J commutes with I, J is going to be invariant under the action of the Hamilton and vector field associated with I. So then J induces a function, or if you want, J comes from a function on the function. Such that if I restrict this function to the well set, if I restrict this function to this, this is the first integral of this reduced vector. So this is basically just laying around the definition, nothing wrong. in the sense that if I start with two first integrals and they commute, I use one of them to reduce and I'm still left with another one to reduce further. Okay. So that's that's what's behind what's usually called integral systems. So you'll say that a uh, Hamiltonian system is completely integrable if it has enough integrals so that you can reduce, 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 and get down to the zero dimension so that you can solve everything. So so here is one possible definition. Oh, 
Come to market fields. On for so many fields. numbers here, there is an R and an S. You see why? Such that. So I will assume that the first R integrals commute with all integrals. So the first R commute with all integrals. I will assume that the sum of the number R and the number S is the dimension of the manifold. And first, we will assume that they are independent sum. So we will write this this way. Maybe almost everywhere, not the four points. Okay, so this is a possible definition of a completely integral system, and why is this justified? Well, so I have these first R integrals, they commute with all integrals. So I can use them to reduce the dimension by 2 times R. Because we just saw that whenever we have commuting integrals, we can reduce the dimension by 2 for each one, right? So these ones reduce dimension by, R, by two arms. On the other hand, I'm left with S minus R integrals, which do not commute, but I can still restrict to the level sets. So I can still reduce the dimension by S minus R. So But if I sum these two numbers, according to my assumption that R plus S is the dimension of M, it means I can reduce the dimension by the whole dimension of the manifold. And that justifies the name. Right. So it is like this Dirac's theory of constraints. In some sense, yes. Yeah, so I'm avoiding talking about Dirac structures, but um, it's clear that Dirac structures. No, I mean, it's the all group of the Dirac, like, yeah. on one of the whatever, first class and second class constraints. Is it roughly. Uh, um, let's see. I'll just show maybe, maybe I'm not allowed to ask such questions. No, you are allowed to ask such questions, and I'm allowed not to ask such questions. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't want to So the way I see this, uh, that's going to be a long thing. So the way I see this direct uh, theory of constraints is by pulling back the direct structures. So, um, and I think you are thinking about, so for you, the, the, so the second well, the kind of constraints is the ones when you take the Poisson brackets, you give you oh, an invertible matrix. The first R, first class, and then the next? Our second class. Our second class. How, exactly how you roll it. Yeah, I think you can say that. Okay. So, 
there is a, I mean, this, this definition is only provisional. There is more stuff here, and that, so we may get back to this. Okay, so don't take this for granted as uh, the final word. Okay? In particular, in the lecture notes, I think I added up some condition that I'm not explaining it here. Okay? All right. Okay, but this gives me an excuse to move on. So this theory of interval systems is, of course, a big thing. Uh, there are special cases of this that are more common. So special case of this is when M is a symplectic manifold and the R and the S are equal. Okay, that's the more classical name that people use for completely integral systems. But I, I really think this is the, the right the right notion. Sometimes this thing in the literature is called non-commutative integral systems. So we may get back to this in the last lecture. I have not decided yet what the last lecture Maybe two people. Okay, anyway. So let's look at something that should be called a moment map. So let's look at the map. given by that collection of first integrals. Okay. Well, this map Y. So, proposition. If Phi is a subjective submersion. So there are some technical conditions here, which is precisely the ones I'm writing. If phi is a subjective submersion with connected fibers, then there exists a unique Poisson structure on RS. such that phi is, is possible, is a possible map. Okay, so the target of this so-called moment map is always the possible manifold in an manifold. And um, a further exercise in the symplectic case. So, if M happens to be symplectic, then show that the fibers of the map I are actually isotropic to manifolds. So in the case where R is equal to S, these isotropic symmetricals have exactly the half the dimension of M, and they are Lagrangian symmetricals, OK? So when R equals S, we get a Lagrangian But this is to let you this is to point out that we've, we saw already that you can ask if I give you a Poisson manifold, is there a symplectic manifold and a Poisson submersion into this Poisson manifold? And sometimes you want to ask more conditions on this Poisson submersion. So you may want to ask that the fibers have some pro special property, like being isotropic or being wavering. Okay, so I have one last example. Um, Marius, finish the time, right? 
Okay, so you can check the last example in the notes. Um, I want to finish the lecture by pointing out two things. So we saw two problems already. One is to give a possible manifold, is it the quotient of a symplectic manifold? Okay. This is clearly a global problem. You may even ask local if it's true, but you can ask global whether this is true or not. And you have plenty of examples to, well, there were a couple of examples where I asked this question and I didn't give you the answer. And another one is, is there a symplectic realization of this possible manifold? Maybe it's not a quotient, but it's... So this is the kind of, that's, that's one kind of global problems that appear in possible, possible geometry. So if you want to solve these problems, you have to dive into the geometry of possible brackets. So that's what we're going to start in the next lecture. So you have to, of course, if you want to deal with global problems, you have to talk, for example, about connections. But we'll see that the ordinary theory of connections is not appropriate to deal with Poisson brackets. Right? So you don't want to ask, for example, for a connection that preserves a Poisson bracket. That's too strong. In general, it does not exist. Um, so next lecture, we are going to start working towards building techniques to solve these kind of global questions and others. <laughs>